Hi, I'm Doc Jenny. Join us in the Green Hornet as we travel the back roads of beautiful North Idaho. Every day is different, challenging, and never boring as we see all the farm animals, big and small. It's Doc Jenny. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about pre-purchase examinations. This is an important part of uh, finding the right equine partner for yourself and making sure that the horse that you pick out and purchase is going to be able to do the things that you want to do at the performance level that you want to be performing at. Thank you Chico. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, performance aspect of the pre-purchase exam today and show you how we uh, check the horses for uh, any unsoundnesses and the, the purpose of the flexion test and how we use them and, and how that works and the best way to perform a lameness evaluation to be sure that the horses are um, being tested properly to make sure that we're, um, if there's any problems that they're going to show up throughout the exam. So. Um, the first part of the examination is just a really good physical exam from head to toe, um, looking at the heart, the lungs, the GI tract, all of that stuff. We do that part first to make sure that the horse is healthy to begin with, and then today we're going to concentrate just on the movement part of the exam so that you can see that part. So we like to start by first starting off with a baseline. So we're going to watch the horse walk and jog away from us and then back towards us on a straight line on a hard surface. So Carolyn's gonna walk Chico directly away from us and I try and get right behind the horse so that I can look at the, the evenness in the hips as the horse is walking away, the way that the tail is centered and how the horse is tracking up on all four legs. And then Carolyn's gonna walk directly back towards us. See she's got slack in the lead rope. I'm looking for the way that the horse's head moves up and down with the way that the horse is stepping. If a horse is limping, that head's gonna bob a little bit. It's a little easier to see at a jog. So she's gonna jog the horse away from us now. Again, I'm looking at the top of the hips, the way the horse's head is carrying um, straight up through the back. And we're gonna look coming back and I'm looking for any kind of a head bob or unevenness. And a horse with a big mane like Chico, sometimes you can see that just in the way that the mane bounces. If you would demonstrate what happens when you have an owner that doesn't understand how the straight line is important, can you, under, can you do that so you can see how hard it is to tell if a horse is lame? <laughs> so the cadence and the gait and all of that is really important. And obviously if the horse isn't moving in a nice straight line away from us, it's really hard to tell if the horse is actually lame. That was an excellent demonstration. <laughs> All right, so now what we're gonna do is the flexion part of this examination. So we start in the front legs. I'm gonna flex this distal joint. I'm gonna be careful not to over flex the knee and just flex here at the distal limb. This is getting the fetlock and the pastern and the coffin joint. So we hold that in flexion for about 45 seconds. I'm putting a good bit of pressure on there. It's similar, I always tell folks, it's similar to like if you were to sit on the floor watching TV and the phone rang. Well, back when we had to run for our phones. I'm dating myself a little bit here. <laughs> now you don't have to run for your phone, right? But if you have to get up and run really fast and all of a sudden none of your joints work, I would not pass a flexion test. All right, so we're gonna drag Chico off now. Carolyn's gonna go in a nice straight line on a loose lead and he jogs off nice and sound, which is good to see. And now she's gonna jog directly back to us. Very nice, we're getting lots of help from the healers. So that's the flexion of the knee. So then what we would do is move on to the other side and flex the other distal limb. I do the front legs first before I move on to the back legs, uh, but I'm just gonna demonstrate for the purpose of this video, demonstrate up the leg to show you the flexion of the next joint. So now we're gonna flex at the knee. So when we flex the knee, I pull the knee into complete flexion and hold it here for 45 seconds. And then in order to stress the upper insertion of the suspensory ligament, after I have held the knee up for 45 seconds, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a twist and that just will, um, if you have a horse that has some suspensory issues, that will show up that way. All right, so we're gonna stress this joint out by moving it back and forth. 
and have Chico trot off. So the last joint that we're gonna do on the front end of the horse is the elbow and the shoulder. So for this joint on most horses, I can't hold that up for 45 seconds. I like to believe I'm superwoman, but I am not. So this one, we're just gonna extend a leg and push up three times in succession and then jog the horse right off. If he needs to stretch, I always let him stretch a little bit first. Some of the horses really enjoy that stretch. And then I'm gonna lift straight up. One, two, three, and jog straight off. And Chico passes with flying colors, which is good to see on a horse that is 17 years old. That's a great thing to see. Now we're gonna move on to the flexions in the back leg. The beauty part is, is that we've only got two flexions to do because of the construction in the back leg. Part of the stay apparatus means that the, these two joints are connected. I can't flex them one at a time, like I can flex the knee and not flex up into the elbow. So I have to flex both the hock and the stifle at the same time. So we start with the distal limb. And I relax the hock as much as I can. Push it forward so that I can isolate just this joint. And I'm using mostly just the weight of the horse. I'm letting that weight flex this joint. We hold that for 30 to 45 seconds. Go ahead, cheek and trot right off. Just a little ouchy on that one, which I'm not surprised. So as he jogged away, there was a little bit of unevenness in the hip. It's very uh, subtle and very limited. So after I have a positive flexion come up, sometimes I'll have Carolyn walk the horse out of it. Again, just like if you were to jump up and then run after something, run to the door, and you kind of limp for a few steps, but after you walk it off, then you're back to normal. And that's pretty typical with a positive result in a flexion test as well. So for the hawk and the stifle, we flex them both at the same time. Ooh. I lift up and let the horse flatten their balance a little bit. Go cheek. Now this horse is my horse. I know he has some soreness and arthritis in his hocks and stifles. Uh, he's my performance horse. He's the one that I use for cowboy dressage. And I have to maintain his hocks and stifles with some anti-inflammatories and some uh, joint supplements. So I would suspect him to be positive to this flexion test. And um, I'm finding I can only crank on these joints so hard. He's a little resistant to me over flexing these joints. So I find a spot that the horse can tolerate because there's no reason to make him unduly painful. We're just trying to, in a horse that we don't know, find these little lamenesses so that we're aware of them before the new owner purchases a horse. This is why all equine veterinarians are buff. We do this weightlifting all the time. Actually, not too bad. Not too bad. He was off just a little bit on the hind limb. So I would call that a, um, on a lameness scale, we would call that a grade one. Lamenesses are, scale, are, are graded on a scale of one to five, with one being the kind of subtle lameness that you'll go, is that, is that horse limping? Was that horse off? Two is more like, yeah, that horse is, is limping, but I'm not quite sure which foot it is. Three, uh, you can definitely see the lameness in the, in the horse and they're usually not fully weight bearing on that limb as they're limping. Four is like toe touching lame. So they'll maybe, po maybe pointing with the limb and five is completely non weight bearing. So that's a gradation of scale that we'll use in order to assess whether or not a horse is lame. So those are the two flexions that we do on the back leg. Do the fetlock distal limb and then we do the hock and stifle at the same time. There's a couple other flexion tests that we can do that include like passing the leg under the body and holding it, which uh, on the hind limb will stress the hip flexors and on the front limb will stress the areas um, of the shoulders and the suprascapula area. We don't do those routinely unless I suspect a problem. Uh, if the horse has a history of an injury or maybe has shown up lame in other places, we may try and isolate it a little bit better by doing those additional flexions. But for most of the pre-purchase evaluations that we do, that's a set of flexions that we'll do. Uh, we'll sometimes also watch the horse in a round pin on a circle. It just kind of depends on the level of performance and the level of training that the horse has. They're, sometimes we'll watch the horse go under saddle as well to see if there's any lamenesses that show up through the back. 
The next part of the lameness evaluation uh, that we do is a little bit of a just a neurologic evaluation uh, and we'll just assess to make sure that the horse doesn't have any weakness in the hindquarters that's showing up. So one of the tests that we do for that is a tail pull exercise and so Carolyn's going to walk the horse away from me and I'm going to pull as the hind leg hits the ground and see if the horse can right himself. I'm going to do that one more time, let the horse figure out what's going on. And that's really pretty normal. Most horses, especially a well-trained horse that gives to pressure, they'll kind of follow that pressure over like, what are you doing? And then they'll right themselves and continue on. A horse that has weakness back there, you're going to pull them and they're going to fall over and stumble. So I don't, I'm not trying to pull him off his feet, I'm trying to see if he can right that feeling when it gets, when he gets pulled over. And I want to do it when that foot's on the ground. And you can see on Chico that he follows that feel, but then he writes himself and goes right back to walking normally. So I would consider that a, a pass. The other test that we do is called a circumduction test. So we're going to move the horse around in a circle. And a normal horse that is stepping around in a circle with its hind legs is going to step so that this leg steps under their body and then this leg is going to step in front and then they carry on in the circle. A horse that can't feel where his back legs are will do this with that leg and it'll be they'll be really base wide because they can't feel where that leg is and then they may hit themselves with the inside leg or step behind or stumble. So we move the horse around in a small circle I'm going to move him away from me and just ask the horse's hindquarters to step around in a circle like that. And that is normal. Then we're going to go the other direction. And step the horse around in a circle. And you can see when Chico steps with his outside hind leg how he's stepping just under his body and catching himself. And then we'll also ask the horse to back. Horses that have trouble backing, often if uh, the back is a two beat rhythm, it's like the jog where it's a diagonal gait. So they step in diagonal pairs. Uh, if a horse has trouble feeling their back legs, then they'll single foot it or drag their feet. So those are all normal results from this evaluation. And I would say that with the exception of the mild lameness that we had from flexion of the fetlocks, that this horse would pass his, his uh, pre-purchase exam. Were I doing this for a client, I would recommend that we do x-rays of any area where the horse flexed positive. Um, in some pre-purchase exams, we'll x-ray everything, every joint, and others will only x-ray the problem joints. So for this particular horse, I would definitely recommend fetlock x-rays and then hawk and stifle x-rays, but that's more coming from knowing his history than it is his evaluation today, because today he was in He's really moving pretty good. He was in pretty good shape. I feel like a pre-purchase exam is a very, very important thing to do on your horse. It's important to have one done well in conditions where you can see the horse move. Um, sometimes we'll get called out to do one, say, in the middle of winter, and we don't have a nice way to move the horse around, or the horse isn't broke enough for us to lead it around. Those things can really interfere with a good pre-purchase evaluation. But for a horse like this who is broke, has a performance record, Doing an evaluation like this is a good baseline. Um, if, even if they show up with some unsoundnesses on the pre-purchase exam, it isn't necessarily a deal breaker, but it lets you know where you are with this horse. This horse has a little bit of lameness issues, but he can be managed with joint injections and uh, joint supplements and anti-inflammatories and proper riding exercises. So he can stay very sound through those. So if you have a horse that is um, at a very high level of performance and comes up with a, some significant lamenesses on a pre-purchase, then that could definitely be a deal breaker. And the x-rays definitely are recommended in those cases to figure out what we're dealing with. So for the purpose of this horse today, I'd say he's a pass. Nice work, Chico. That's our basic evaluation of a horse for a performance aspect as far as a pre-purchase exam. Uh, that's the movement part of the exam and then of course the um, the physical examination is the other part of that exam because we want them to be healthy as well. Hey everybody, thanks for riding with us in the Green Hornet today. This is Doc Jenny signing out. If you like what you saw, be sure and follow us in the Green Hornet with Tormund out on the road with Doc Jenny. Just click the link below <laughs> and follow us along on our journeys. See you later.